Coming up on News Channel 12 Live at 6, budget cuts are not only hitting WKU, grade schools are now bracing themselves. And young adults aren't making time to watch the local news. A brief warm-up is in sight. My forecast is coming up. We'll give you an update on the deadly tornadoes that affected Tennessee. And a new bill is passed to help keep Kentucky safe from sexual predators. This is News Channel 12, live at 6. Live from the campus of Western Kentucky University, where the spirit makes the magic. This is News Channel 12, live at 6. Good evening, I'm A.J. Smith. And I'm Morgan White. The talk of the hill today is all about the snow. And Justin Logan joins us with a look at what we can expect tonight. Justin? If we take a look at our Doppler radar, this was starting last night. What happened here, this back edge, this was the snow that started last night. So it moved throughout the overnight into today. As you can see, there goes some snow right there moving off to from the northwest. We got a northwesterly flow, so that helped bring in and enhance our snow showers as we went through the day. Officially, though, we only saw about a trace of snow out at the airport. Currently, though, across the region, it's 26 in Louisville, 24 in Nashville and Paducah. Feels like 25 in Indianapolis. 23 is what it is in Charleston. So your hike up the hill forecast for tomorrow, 28 to 8 a.m., mostly sunny, continues mostly sunny at noon, warming up to about 42, 45 by 5 p.m. I'll have your five-day forecast coming up. Thanks, Justin. Today's snowfall was the first since classes have been back in session for students. Some noticed low attendance in class, while others took advantage of the fun that a little snow can bring. Kellen Young set off to see how students were braving the outside conditions. My classes got canceled, and I came out to eat, and it's really cold. Well, I'm freaking cold. Somebody threw a snowball at me while I was walking to my office hours at Revolution. I mean, it really hasn't affected me too much. I uh, don't drive to school. I live on campus. My friend said only five people were in her class. Yeah, a lot of people don't go to class when it's this cold. Why did somebody throw a snowball at me? I don't know, but I had a friend who was throwing snowballs at complete strangers today. And I was like, dude, what do you do that for? She goes, it's winter. That's what you do in the winter. The Tennessee Emergency Management Agency has revised the state's death toll from last week's storms to 31. You're looking at actual footage of a tornado that hit last week in Jackson, Tennessee. Now, the new death toll is two fewer than the agency had reported on Sunday. A spokesperson says the error came because two people had been counted twice. There is still one person missing in Trousdale County, and some of the injured are in critical condition, so that count could change again. A bill to fight against Kentucky's online child predators has won approval in the House Judiciary Committee. The bill would allow law enforcement to use specially trained decoys for online stings. Another provision would keep registered sex offenders from using social networking websites such as MySpace. It would also require offenders to notify the registry if they change their email addresses. The legislation is House Bill 367. According to the Bowling Green Daily News, about 870 auto workers at the General Motors assembly plant in Bowling Green received notice of another round of buyouts on Tuesday. The buyouts are a part of a special program that offers a choice of several pension and buyout incentives as GM prepares to, to be more competitive, cutting jobs into lower wage positions. GM is offering a new round of buyouts to all 74,000 of its U.S. hourly workers who are represented by the United Auto Workers Union. The president of UAW for the Bowling Green plant says the buyouts are, were expected and he estimates about 70 workers will accept them locally. At WKU, $2.5 million was cut from the budget. Among the cuts were utilities, health insurance, and university reserve. Non-departmental cuts make up about 75% of the cuts made. Another $2.5 million will be cut from Western's budget starting July 1st of this year. President Ransdell says any additional cuts by the state could lead to an 8-9% tuition increase for students. And higher education institutions aren't the only ones affected by the state's budget crisis. Primary level educators are also bracing themselves for some major cuts. News Channel 12 takes a look at how one group is fighting back. Stop by the gallery at 916 in downtown Bowling Green anytime this month 
And you'll see the work of area artists. It's the best show I've seen in Bowling Green in the last 20 years. And all the different talents that are in here are just okay. absolutely incredible. Artworks, a visual art coalition, is proud to display their work. And they aren't afraid to speak out about problems facing the art community. I, I think the community has not valued its visual arts or its visual artists. Um, I'm personally going to see that, that that impression is going to change. So when it comes to funding art education, these group members have a lot to say. I was in Frankfurt last Tuesday um, with a host of other people from across the state telling our legislators how important it is that we keep the funding not only for um, what's happening in the schools but also the outreach programs. If you took away math, what would you be as a graduating student? What would you be if you took away the science program? It's the same with the art programs. What if you take away the art programs? You're not developing a whole person. Artworks members will continue to bring awareness to these programs through an exhibition that will run until the 29th. As for Kentucky schools art programs, its fate is up to state legislators. To find out how you can support local art programs, go to www.artworksinc.org. Bowling Green will fund a downtown redevelopment project the city commission voted three to two in favor of supporting the $25 million in bonds necessary to continue with the downtown redevelopment project. The project will span from 14th Street to 6th Street and will include Circus Square Park, a baseball stadium, a parking structure, condominiums, a downtown hotel, and a performing arts center. WKU agreed to lease 200 spots in the future in the parking structure for commuter students' use. The lease is for 30 years and Western will pay $250,000 for the first 15 years and only $1 per year for the remaining lease. WKU students will join more than 12,000 fellow spring breakers from across the nation participating in Habitats for Humanity Collegiate Challenge. During the week of March 9th through the 14th, students will work to build simple, decent and affordable houses. The WKU chapter will be traveling to North and South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. For those graduating in May, this week is your last chance to have pictures taken. Senior pictures are taken free of charge until 8 to 9. If you need more time, photographers will be in Downing University Center from 10 to 6 tomorrow and 10 to 4 on Friday. Students can also schedule an appointment online at www.ryear.com. Young adults are increasingly, are, are increasingly turning to us other sources than prime time news for their current events. And some argue they aren't even getting the real thing. News Channel 12's Jason Hibbs has the story. From math to music, Western students are involved in almost everything imaginable. But one thing most students don't have much time for is what's going on off campus in the real world. I just stay real busy, you know what I'm saying? Work and school, it's just me. I don't really watch the news on TV. Broadcast journalism professor Terry Lyke says times have changed and with all the entertainment options available nowadays, news isn't a priority. Tuning in, for example, to traditional news sources like the CBS Evening News every night is not a primary concern for them and they have so many choices to choose from. Professor Likes went on to say those students who do pay attention to the news, well, most of them don't get their information from sources like these. Fewer students read newspapers the way older generations grew up reading newspapers on a daily basis. He went on to say many other students get their info from news parodies and comedy shows like David Letterman and Stephen Colbert. And that can have an effect on the way they view the news. Are you basing it on what a comedian has told you or on the facts pertaining to the issues? But experts still say some news is better than no news at all. Reporting for News Channel 12, I'm Jason Hibbs. Coming up on News Channel 12 Live at 6, the very first Congressional Medal of Honor is in town. And News Channel 12's Kim Graves tells us a refugee finding new life in the U.S. The odds of a child being in a Broadway show are 1 in 11,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit AutismSpeaks.org.
here's something to think about. New research shows that regular exercise and a heart-healthy diet may help to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Thinking ahead now might make all the difference tomorrow. For more ways to maintain your brain, visit the Alzheimer's Association at ALZ.org. You're watching News Channel 12 Live at 6. Your source for late-breaking news affecting you. Storm Center 12 forecast. The latest sports scores and highlights from your team. And consistently voted best newscast. News Channel 12, your source for news. Bowling Green has various restaurants with exquisite cuisines, but what if you're, you want a certain type of food that you could only find in one place? News Channel 12's Kim Graves tells us more. A Bosnian refugee owns the only Greek restaurant in downtown Bowling Green. Upon eluding the Bosnian Civil War in Vocha, Bosnia, and then fleeing from Germany to the U.S., Bowling Green has since been her home for several years. We came here in uh, 1998, and we started working in factory. We worked in factory like nine, nine months, me and my husband. We find place in Greenwood Mall, in food court, and we worked in Germany a little bit in restaurant. And he just find place in Greenwood Mall, and he said, okay, let's go open restaurant. <laughs> the family-owned business brings a little taste of Europe to the community. And we opened Greek because I worked for, for uh, Greek a restaurant in, in Germany, in Berlin. But Greek, Greek food is very close to Bosnian food. You know, it's very similar to Bosnian food. Barach's restaurant has also brought in a few regular customers. And uh, that's the reason why I come first here for the food, and I meet the nice, nice people. They had been coming since the restaurant opened. Um, seven years. Barach enjoys her customers as well as keeping them that's fight. <laughs> For News Channel 12, I'm Kim Graves. The family says they will keep their restaurant in town in hopes of getting a bigger space in the future. Retail sales showed a surprising rebound in January after a dismal slump in December. The Commerce Department said total sales rose 0.3% compared to a 0.4% decline in December. This is despite predictions of another slump for the beginning of the year. Consumer spending accounts for two-thirds of the total economic activity. It's being closely watched for signals of whether the country is falling into a recession, and some economists believe a recession has already started. If you thought time travel was the stuff of H.G. Wells or Star Trek science fiction, not so fast. Mathematicians in Russia believe a huge European particle accelerator being built could be the first time machine. They argue that wormholes or tunnels through space-time could allow for a form of time travel. The catch is you can only travel back in time far enough to when the machine was built, namely 2008. So maybe next year you could travel back to this year and retake that exam you messed up on this semester. Trains are a key for our country's transportation, and during the Civil War, the Union tried to take this key from the Confederates. It's a mission of bravery that resulted in the nation's first Medals of Honor. Alex Sherman has the story. The Congressional Medal of Honor has long been a symbol of bravery and service for the United States. And this month, a replica of the first ever Medal of Honor comes to the Ellen n Depot in Bowling Green. And... This is a great tribute to all of our military and also tells the connections of how railroads uh, were connected to our nation's history. The medal was given after the great locomotive chase of the Civil War. James Andrews and a group of spies dubbed Andrews Raiders snuck aboard and hijacked a Confederate train called the General in Marietta, Georgia, set for Chattanooga and tearing up railroad tracks and cutting telephone lines along the way. The conductor of the General ran in pursuit using a push cart and even running for miles on foot before commandeering the engine Texas. The Raiders made it to just two miles south of Chattanooga before they ran out of fuel. All of them were caught, some were executed, while the rest were later released as prisoners of war. After their release, Congress and the Department of War came up with a medal to reward bravery in the face of danger for their country. Andrews Raiders were the first to receive this honor. During a time of war, when you're behind enemy lines and sitting in clothes, you can be shot as a spy. 
And all of these Union soldiers knew this going into it. So they were essentially putting their lives on the line in an effort to end the war sooner. With this medal on display at the LNN Depot alongside an exhibit of the chase, the Raiders' efforts are appreciated by the same nation they put their lives on the line for. Alex Sherman, News Channel 7. Thank you so much. This replica of the Medal of Honor will be on display at the LNN Depot on Kentucky Street for the rest of the month. Coming up next in weather, Justin Logan will tell us how long the cold temperatures will last. And later in sports, Alex Sherman will bring you a preview of tonight's game. Radon? Raid a oh, radon. Is that a gas? Of course. I had it in my house. Is it something that comes up out the ground or something? Something dangerous that you're supposed to check on to make sure it's not in your home. True or false, radon is a radioactive gas. False. True. It's true? The Office of the Surgeon General recommends all homes be tested for radon. Uh, false. False. It's true. True. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. True. False. True. True. I didn't know that. Homes with radon problems can be fixed. False. It's true. Wow. So what do you do about it? I'm going to dial the number and call. 1-800-SOS-RADON. I don't even know where they're going to have it checked. I'm going to call. I'm going to check into it. Yes, I'm worried. I'm seriously going to get that kit. If I don't take care of it, nobody else will. 1-800-SOS-RADON. You see, she's the brighter sister. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> you had the best medical care, but still your baby was born three months early. March of Dimes research helps save babies from prematurity. For information or to lend a hand, visit marchofdimes.com. Let's find the answers together. I am the face. The hands. The spirit. Of WKU. I think big. I explore the unknown. I educate the educators. I find the answers. I investigate. And inform. I am recognized by my peers. This is who we are. WKU. The spirit makes the master. As you made your class, uh, way to class today, you saw some snow showers coming down. Sometimes at a pretty good clip, but the main story really was the cold temperatures out there. If we take a look at our Doppler radar, though, this started last night. This was the back edge of the precip that had already turned over to snow. It's so moved throughout the day. As you can see, there goes the snow through Bowling Green. Radar doesn't pick up on snow very well, but as we saw today, we did see a Good little bit of snow. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Right now it's cloudy. The temperature is 24 degrees in Bowling Green. 66% is the relative humidity. The winds are northwest at 9, helping to bring in those colder temperatures. And the pressure is steady at 30.06 inches. Today our high temperature was only 26 degrees. This morning's low was 21. Our normal is 48. So we're well below that and only a trace of snow officially at the airport. For the month, though, precipitation 2.75 inches. That's in the form of liquid. Last 24 hours of clouds, we put them into motion. You can see those clouds are moving off the east coast. Well, that was a cold front that moved through last night with an area of low pressure, but the counterclockwise rotation around that, that helped bring in some backlash moisture and brought us our snow showers today. High pressure, though, uh, center of over Oklahoma. That's going to be starting to take control for the uh, better half of tomorrow. Then we turn our focus up to the northwest and the northern plains for another cold front. So the next 48 hours high pressure tomorrow at 6 a.m. It's going to be scooting off to the east throughout the day. We're going to get it on a clockwise return flow, pulling up some warmer temperatures. But late tomorrow night into the day on Friday, cold fronts going to be approaching, bringing us a chance of some rain. So for tonight, flurries and cold, a low of 21. For your tomorrow, warming up to around 45 degrees, mostly sunny. That's more seasonable. And a south wind at 5 to 10 tomorrow night, cooling off to around 34 for a low. Only a 30% chance of some rain and snow. And your next five days, as we look into Friday, that chance of rain is going to be likely at a 60% chance, a high of 42, 41 on Saturday uh, with a late chance of some rain and snow. I'll have a look at your seven-day trend coming up a little bit later. Thanks, Justin. The weather is literally bringing the White House to its knees. Last night, U last night, U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates suffered a fractured shoulder after slipping on ice. The Pentagon says Gates will perform his duties while being treated. 
A winter storm hit what the Washington area yesterday, snarling traffic and preventing some voters from casting their ballots in the District of Columbia primaries. Officials are not saying where Gates slipped, except that it was not at the Pentagon. And Alex Sherman joins us with a preview of sports. Hey, Jay Morgan, huge game tonight at Diddle. Also, I'll tell you about somebody that's been doing some slipping of our own here at Eric Western. Is she thirsty or diabetic? Is he tired or arthritic? Does he need a brushing or a blood test? Sometimes it's tough to tell the difference between normal feline behavior and the sign of a serious health problem. Subtle behavioral changes can be early signs of disease in pets. Cats can be better than dogs at hiding illness, and cat owners may not notice a change until the disease is advanced. That's why all pets should receive a wellness exam from a veterinarian twice a year. Twice a year exams can help your veterinarian detect, treat, or ideally prevent many health problems before they become serious. So call your veterinarian and schedule your pet's wellness exam today. Is she playful or saying thank you for keeping me healthy? A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Once they've outgrown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit BoosterSeat.gov. With scores and highlights for your team, News Channel 12 Sports. With Courtney Lee breaking 30 points per game three times this season, the Hilltopper basketball team continues to stay hot. The Tops have only dropped five games this season and only one in the Sun Belt Conference. At home, they're undefeated, which makes tonight's game against Troy even more special as the Tops look to keep Diddle perfect. 2,000. That's a pretty nice number, right? That's also the amount of career points Courtney Lee tallied. Tyrone Brazelton has been upping his ante as well, notching 21 points against North Texas over the weekend. The Trojans come to WKU tonight, having won only three games in the conference. The last time these two teams met, Troy was able to pull within four points of the tops, only to watch the time on the clock slip away. Tip-off is at 7 in EA Diddle Arena tonight. The NCAA decides to make Western one of its venues for next year's women's basketball tournament. The committee selected this yesterday, along with seven other sites for the first and second rounds of the tournament. This is the first time an NCAA Division I tournament has been played in Diddle Arena since 1995. The College Heights Herald has stepped up on the men's soccer team issue. WKU's student pay newspaper filed a complaint with the Board of Regents Attorney General saying the board violated its open door policy. They believe discussions to ax the men's soccer team shouldn't have been discussed behind closed doors. However, there is a clause that states there may be a closed meeting when the content of the meeting involves termination of an employee. Attorney General Jack Conway and the Board of Regents have 10 business days to release all minutes, recordings, and transcripts of that meeting. Roger Clemens answers questions from Congress today about alleged steroid use during his career. Richard Roth has reaction from fans. 12-year-old Alex Kleinfeld practices his pitching. But on his birthday, he's going to watch a former New York Yankee pitcher, one of baseball's biggest stars ever, testify on television in front of Congress. I'm just going to watch it and hope that Clemens gets exposed. Roger Clemens has denied the accusations of steroids use. This is not about records and heroes and numbers. I could give a rat's ass about that. This is about my health. I've always been concerned about my health, what I put in my body. You think he's a liar? Yeah. Big liar? Yeah. The owner of this suburban New York baseball training center, Dan Gray, a former player, once met the great Clemens. Gray says the next generation can't escape hearing about steroids in the sport called America's pastime. We're souring it. We're, we're really getting down to the essence of the game, which is the integrity of the game, and it's being compromised. There's no doubt about that. I see it on a daily basis with the kids that come in to me, because uh, the kids comment on it every day to me. Kids such as Robert Sherrill. And the greater hitters and pitchers, I have less trust in them that they're telling me the truth that they're not doing steroids. Jack Zenkel is a huge Yankees fan. They have all of these baseball heroes that they look up to and they all, Jack still dreams about being a professional baseball player and 
all of a sudden, all their images are tainted. Parents have to talk about the birds and the bees, but before that, it's baseball. Matt and I have talked about steroids and how steroids are drugs, and drugs are bad, and they're bad for your body, and why not to do them? Ready, go! Well, she told me that they're bad for you, and you shouldn't take them. Even if you really kind of stink at it. John Wolf was good enough to play three years in professional baseball's minor leagues, where the show, the major leagues, is one phone call away. Guys feel the urge, feel the temptation to, to try it. Um, does that make it right? Of course not. It's definitely not right, but it's certainly a problem. And a more immediate problem for a player who was a hero to many, now just taking the field. Richard Roth, CNN, Mount Kisco, New York. All right, thank you, Alex. Thanks. Next in entertainment, we have some Valentine's Day ideas for you and your sweetheart. And Rachel Collier brings us excitement from the rodeo this weekend. I'm tall enough to reach the light I think that is a compliment. I'm big enough to brush my teeth by myself. I'm the tallest kid in my class. I haven't worn diapers in years. I'm much less likely to vomit at random now. <laughs> My cups don't have lids anymore. Mine either. I'm getting pretty big. But to help me survive a car crash, I still need you to give me a boost. Until they're four foot nine, use a booster seat in the car and don't let them down. Impossible. When you open a book, you can explore new lands meet new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. You can log on to the Library of Congress website and let the journey begin. When you fill someone's life with hope, you wind up adding a little more to your own. Help America's youth. Be a friend. Be a mentor. Just be there. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. The Lone Star Rodeo came to Western's Agricultural Center this weekend. Sunday morning was cold, but the animals were calmly awaiting their events. It was a different story inside the arena. The rodeo included bareback riding, calf roping, steer wrestling, and of course, bull riding. The 18,000 square foot arena had an estimated 1,500 people there, decked out with cowboy boots and hats. The three-day rodeo drew numerous spectators and participants, including one college student who rides bulls for the money. Well, the horses buck really good. If you ride good, you can get a check. They call the thing rodeo. For more information on the rodeo and other events going on at Western's Ag Center, go to www.wku.edu slash Ag Expo Center. Dance the night away, big band style, this Friday with the WKU Jazz Band. Here's a look at the WKU Jazz Band in rehearsal, practicing some of the swinging music you can expect to dance to on Friday. The Jazz Band is presenting their annual Valentine's Dance this Friday at 7.30 in Garrett Ballroom. The band has had many performances throughout the year, but this one is by far a favorite. The event is open to the whole community, admission is free, but donations will be gladly accepted to benefit Delta Omicron, the service providers. If you don't have a creative day plan for your sweetheart tomorrow, the Department of Theater and Dance is conducting a student play festival. The festival includes the Gashley Crumb Tinies, Identity Crisis, and Can Can and the Chalky White Substance. The performance goes from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. tomorrow evening at Gordon Wilson Fine Arts Hall Theater. And another fun romantic Valentine's date idea is happening at the Capitol Arts Center tomorrow evening. The Luma Light Show is a one-of-a-kind, dazzling display of light. Performers use their light as their props while the entire theater is darkened. Sounds like fun. Thanks, Rachel. 
Justin Logan now joins us with a final look at our forecast. Let's take a look at our next seven days here. As you can see, today actually we saw a high temperature of 26. Tomorrow that's going to be going up to 45, which is actually more seasonable. The next seven days we're going to be topping out around 45 tomorrow, 42 on Friday with a chance of some rain, 41 on Saturday, <clears throat> p.m. precipitation, and we're going to cool off into next week. Thanks, Justin. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for making News Channel 12 your source for news. Have a good night. We've got a contest for you.